is the sixth physics lesson, and this lesson is on tension. We're going to learn about what tension is. We're going to solve problems involving tension. Uh, when we calculate, we're going to be able to calculate tension when strands are directed up, one or more, and we're going to be able to calculate tension when we have strands um, at equal angles from the center point. You'll see what that means later. So tension is the pulling force exerted by the strand in the opposite direction of the force applied. So if he's pulling on this rope or strand of some sort to the right, with the force applied, he's going to have tension in the rope. He's going to create this tension in the rope, which will be Ft. The unit on any force is going to be the Newton, which you see here. Any, any F, Ft for F tension or Fa for F force applied, both of those are going to be Newtons. So when tension is up equal to weight, we have two possible conditions. Um, we could have static equilibrium. So static equilibrium just means it's at rest and staying at rest. Once again, this goes with inertia. So no net force. It's at equilibrium. There's no acceleration. We have static equilibrium, meaning resting equilibrium. Whereas we could still have no net force, but if the object was moving, it's going to keep on wanting to move. So if we have had a tension equal to the weight down, so if you're pulling up equal to the weight down, then there's no net force, there's no acceleration. We would have constant motion. So notice how this is just moving at a constant rate. This would also go with inertia. It just happened to be a dynamic situation. Constant velocity. When tension is up is greater than weight down, so here we have a net force. If you take a look and you circle this whole thing, the net force, this F, Ft right here is bigger than the Fw. So we have a net force going upwards. And when, whenever we have a net force going with Newton's second law, F, for, F net or net force creates acceleration. It's not just motion. We can have motion without, without net force. You saw that in dynamic, in, in dynamic equilibrium in the past slide. So the object would accelerate up. No net force, acceleration up, no, not equilibrium. When tension is less than weight, so we have a picture like this, tension is less than weight, we're going to have an acceleration. Once again, if net force, if you take the two forces together and the net force is anything other than zero, we call it non-zero. Anything other than zero, it's going to accelerate one way or the other. In this case, the weight is bigger than the tension force that you see. So the net force here would be down. Take the ten weight, weight, subtract tension force from it, and that would be the net force. And then we can go ahead, if we knew the mass of the object, we could use the F net equation and figure out how much it's accelerating downwards. Uh, when you have an uh, object that's sitting on the surface, so like this picture right here, it falls to the ground, it hits the ground. At that point in time, it still has the same, say it had the same tension. Once again, this person or whatever's holding it up is holding it up at the same rate, put, applying the same force up, creating the same tension into this rope. And as a result, you're going to have the weight pulling down, tension going up. Well, we would still have equilibrium because it's sitting on a counter, and so the net overall force would be zero. But to find what this normal force is provided by the ground, it's not going to have to provide what the tension is already providing. So you're going to add these two values together, and they're going to equal this value. And so that's what this is saying. You add one up plus the other one is going to equal this value, once again, the magnitude of it. But if you take a look at that, that just means down, whereas these both are going to be up. So you can ignore the sign and just look at the magnitudes. Sign is just representing an opposite direction. So what's the tension of, in a rope necessary to lift a 150 newton object at a constant velocity up? And that's going to be 150 newtons, once again, constant velocity. If it's already going up, you just have to apply the a force equal to the weight. And anytime you see something like this, a 150 newton object, it's describing the object. If it's newtons, it's going to be weight. If it's kilograms, it's going to be mass. And if you ever had to solve for weight from kilograms, you just have to take that mass, multiply it by the g, which would be 10 meters per second squared. Okay, what's the normal force of a 15 kilogram object when on the ground and a rope of 50 newton with 50 newtons of tension is pulling up? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to first of all and ignore this. It's not supposed to be there. Um, you take that 15 kilograms, and we're going to go ahead and take that mass, and we're going to go ahead and take all our information, our tension. I'm just going to put it over here on the side because it's going to be something we're going to need as well. But we're going to want to find weight using the, the g of the acceleration due to gravity of 10 meters per second squared. We find weight by multiplying mass times gravity, and we get 150 newtons down, and then we start drawing in our force diagram. So in drawing our force diagram, we can draw this force 
down. Then we're going to go ahead and put the force of tension. Once again, they told you 50 newtons of tension up. We can put those 50 newtons up. And now what we have to do is we have to figure out, so what do we have? What do we have to add to this? What do we have to add from there to there to make it equal to this, what's going down? And so we just go ahead and add those two together. And I'm just ignoring the sign for now. Um, so I left out the negative for the sake of it's not really mathematical. It's more directional. This is down. These are both up. So we go ahead and plug in our values. Tension's 50, 150. We were going to subtract the 50 from the 150. We get 100 newtons. So this force right here is going to end up being 150 newton, 100 and 100 newtons. Okay. Now when we have multiple ropes going on like this, if they're directed up, we would divide. The, if there's multiple ropes, we're going to divide the total tension. So if it was a single, let me just draw a new picture. Single object, you have a weight going down. If it's a single rope up, the entire tension, the entire weight is going to be in the tension of the rope. So the FT going up would be equal to the weight. But if we have multiple ropes, we're going to have a chance to split that up. And if they're all directed up, equal, equally spaced, directed up, um, all with the same same sort of kind of balanced system because they're all directed up then we're going to have a split we're going to have if there's three ropes we're going to take that 150 we're going to divide it by three and each of those ropes is going to have to apply that 150 divided by three or 50 50 and 50 newtons so if it's directed up all we have to do is divide by the number of strands but if it's directed at an angle we're going to see how we deal with that differently the Susie who weighs, weighs 650 newtons suspends herself from the monkey bars holding herself up with both, hand, both hands horizontal. What's the tension in each arm? So the tension in each arm, let's go ahead, let's take her weight. She's going to have to be held up there. So she's held up by the monkey bars. There's Susie. Her weight, I'll make it a free body diagram or a, just a force diagram. Her weight is 650 newtons and each of these strands is going to have to support part of that weight. So we're going to take the two arms, we're going to divide it in 650 by 2, we get 325 newtons, and that would be the tension in each of the arms. So each of these would have a force of 325 newtons up. 325, 325 over here. This being 650 or double that. Okay, now when we have a, a tension at an angle, this is, the, this is the vertical. The bigger this angle from the vertical, the more tension is going to be in this rope. So the maximum we could possibly have is if the vertical of this would be almost directed straight up, straight, straight horizontal, which is almost it's impossible to get completely horizontal. We can get almost horizontal. Um, that would be the point where this tension and this rope and this rope would be the maximum value. So how can you solve for tension and angle when we when at equal angles from the vertical? Tension is going to increase as the angle to the vertical increases. We're going to figure out what each rope has to lift individually if it was directly up and down. So let's say we had two ropes. We're going to figure out, well, if they were equal, what would they each have to weigh or each have to um, support? What tension here? What tension here? Let's say this was 500 newtons down. Well, this would have to support 250 and this would have to support 250 newtons. That would be the place where we start this. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and so this, so we have, so let's go ahead and make that a problem. We have a object. I'm just going to make it up. We have 200 newtons of weight. We have two ropes directly up. And so the, each of those would normally have to support 100 newtons, 100 newtons, 100 newtons, half and half. But it's going to be at an angle. If it's ever at an angle, whether it's this way holding it up or this way holding it up, if it's at an angle, you figure out how far away from the vertical it is. Whatever this angle is, make this into a triangle, and you just have to take one of these. So this is 100 newtons right here, this side. If we solve for the hypotenuse, that's going to be comparative. That's going to tell you how much tension is actually in the rope when the rope is geared at an angle like this to the side. So we're going to solve for the hypotenuse. Um, for, for tension in this individual rope, let's go ahead and just do an example. What is the tension in each rope of the two ropes holding up a 9 kilogram mass at a 35 degree angle from the vertical? So we're going to go ahead and we are going to draw a picture out. We're going to solve for weight so that we can actually have the force down. So it's FW equals MG. 
So we solve for the weight and we end up getting 90 newtons. So two arms are going to support this. So 90 divided by 2, we get 45 newtons each. And we're going to go ahead, and so each arm would normally have to support the 45 newtons, but we're going to go ahead and figure out what the hypotenuse is when our angle is 35 degrees from the vertical. Once again, this is the vertical. So we're going to go to when we have adjacent and we have hypotenuse, the, the sine function is going to be cosine. Cosine is equal to cosine of an angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. We want to figure out, we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to want to figure out what, um, we're going to have to first of all get our calculator into degrees, and then we're going to have to figure out the hypotenuse. This is going to give us our answer. So we're going to plug this in, cosine of 30. Once again, we get cosine of 35. We get 35 there. We get our adjacent side right there, 45. And we're going to go ahead and rearrange this. So we're going to multiply out the hypotenuse, divide out the so multiply out the hypotenuse, divide out the cosine of 35, divide out the cosine 35. That's going to get rid of this. Pretty much what we're going to do, we're going to end up switching this and this. So this is really like at the top. And so we get hypotenuse of 45 over 35, and our angle is going to be 54.9 newtons. So the tension in this rope right here is 54.9 newtons. Okay, what's the tension in a single rope um, directly holding up a 5.6 kilogram object suspended, suspended in air? For a problem like this, we're going to have to take, and this is the problem set, so make sure if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and do the problem set. Don't just watch what I'm doing. Do it and then check your work with what, I, what, I, what I'm doing. Mass of 5.6 kilograms, gravity of 10. We're going to find weight. Our weight is going to be 56 newtons down, and that would be if there's a single rope, and that's what there is. So the answer here is 56 newtons down. What's the tension in each arm when a 700, girl, uh, 700 newton girl holds herself up on the monkey bars with two hands? So she's holding herself up with two hands, and they already tell you the weight, 700 newtons of FW. So all you have to do is go ahead and take that answer, divide by two, and each of these arms is going to have to support 350 newtons up because they're directed up. So whether it's an arm or a string or a wire, Tension will be, be involved in, in that, that strand, whatever it happens to be. What's the tension in a 1.8 kilogram painting that hangs with two ropes, each at 60 degrees to the vertical? Well, we can go ahead and solve for that. Take their mass, take our gravity, find a weight from that, FW equals mg. We got 18 newtons. There's two ropes here, so let's go ahead and figure out what each of those ropes would have to support. They each have to support half of that, so 18 divided by 2, 9 newtons. Then we go ahead and picture it out. If it was directed up, and let's go ahead and just take one of these. So we're going to just pretend we're just going to take one of these. Nine newtons are directed up, but it's going to hang with two ropes. And I guess for the picture, it might hang more likely like this. It's going to hang at 60 degrees from the vertical. So nine newtons, 60 degrees from the vertical. We want to find the hypotenuse. We find the hypotenuse. We know our answer. So this is the hypotenuse. There is our adjacent with adjacent and hypotenuse. We're going to cosine, plug in our values, rearrange a little bit, and you get 18 newtons. So each of these strands, so what's really happening in, in re reality, you're holding up a picture, probably something like this. Here's your picture. And each of these lines are going to hold, each of these cords are going to hold, have a tension of 18 newtons in them. Okay, what's the tension in a 2.5 kilogram flower pot that's hung with three ropes? So we're going to start the same way. We're going to figure out the weight, which we figured out to be 25 newtons, just like we did before. But now we're going to have to divide the ropes by three because there's three ropes holding it up. And so if directed straight up, we're going to just take each of these ropes individually. So it's holding up, uh, holding on to a flower pot. This may be the flower pot. There'd be one, two, three ropes holding it up. We're just going to take one of those ropes because we already figured out that that rope directly up would have to support 8.33 newtons, but it's not directed directly up. It's going to be 15 degrees from the vertical. We're going to solve for the hypotenuse. We solve for the hypotenuse. We have our answer. This is the adjacent side. So we plug in our numbers. We rearrange it a little bit. And when we do cosine or hypotenuse of, or we do 8.33 divided by cosine 15. Once again, make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians. You're going to get 8.62 newtons. So each of the ropes, so if I drew a flower, flower pot for real with three ropes going up, each of those ropes, ropes would be supporting 8.62 newtons, and that would be the FT, the tension up or upwards at an angle in each of those ropes.